Today on A Taste of Alexander Technique, um, we are working with Neil, who is interested in learning how to coordinate his playing of the banjo lele, which is a combination of a banjo and a ukulele, and his singing. You'll hear about how Neil has been experiencing some neck pain, even though we might not know the exact reason behind it. There are several different ways that we can access the freeing of our neck or the, as we call it in the Alexander world, the primary control where the, the communication between your mind and your body and your spirit and all that stuff kind of comes together. Today we're accessing his primary control through arm lines. So arm lines, we have a, we probably have more than this, but the ones I'm focusing on today are the thumb line, which it goes all the way through our clavicle, sternum, and all the way down to our other thumb line. And then we have our lovely pinky line, which goes all the way through our shoulder blades, past our spine, and down throughout the other pinky. So we have a lot of access here. And what Neil's gonna learn how to do is kind of play with that in reference to his banjo lele. It's all about kind of playing with the situation and seeing what works best for you. So the way I might work with Neil might be different from the way I work with you. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of A Taste of Alexander Technique and see you on the other end. Hi everyone and welcome to A Taste of Alexander Technique. Today I have um, a special guest, Neil. Um, Neil, would you like to tell a little bit about yourself? Sure. Hello, uh, my name is Neil Ferreira. I am a tenor. I'm an opera singer and soloist. I live in Haverhill, Massachusetts. I am also a voice teacher and a Montessori music educator. I teach at a few Montessori schools in the North Shore area. And I have taken an Alexander class with Katie and I'm thrilled to be here. So. What do you perceive as the Alexander technique as of right now? Alexander Technique uh, has given me a way to approach tension and without saying, oh, that, yeah, don't do that. Let that go, right? Because that's, a hard, that's a, <laughs> a hard thing to do, just to automatically let something go uh, because you're told to. And so uh, I have been trying to incorporate my understanding of Alexander practice into my own posture and my own alignment uh, as it results to my singing and my teaching. I, I think about our class all the time. Um, and I was thinking about uh, one thing that I've been really trying to impart to my students is meeting yourself where you're at today. At, you know, teaching in front of a screen all day is something that I have to do in this moment. And when I finish teaching or I have an hour break from teaching and I want to sing, I can't suddenly erase that, you know, a few hours that I've been teaching before that point and the physicality that I've kind of fallen into as a result of that, you know, automatically I've got to figure out how to work with myself in this moment and how to find, you know, that release or um, through what it is that I'm feeling today, not just my, you know, training. One of the things that um, Alexander technique has invited me to pay more attention to is uh, the suboccipital nerve cluster at the base of my skull. And I know you talk about that as calling it in Alexander Technique, the primary control. And I notice for myself that I tend to store a bit of attention here at the base of my skull in that primary control. And particularly recently in this time of Zoom and teaching online and all these things, you know, I spend a lot of time at my piano with my screen in front of me and slightly here, which, you know, I think I know uh, from teaching high school students, they spend a lot of time like this too. What's our task for today? What are we doing? I am going to sing a little bit from an aria uh, from The Grapes of Wrath. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've got my uh, banjo ukulele, and I'm going to sing a little bit from this aria that I've been working on. This is the preacher, Casey, uh, who is sitting by the side of the road, uh, who meets uh, Al Jode as he comes uh, home on his way from prison and Casey is singing this song to himself as Joe approaches. Jesus was my savior, not now that he 
okay about it yeah I, I you know it's morning time i haven't done a ton of singing yet today so vocally feel a little bit come on wake up let's go here we go uh so that's about it but other than that yeah i feel okay uh, i'm gonna actually have you um see if you can just hold your banjo and just notice the weight of your banjo lately mm, it's heavier than a ukulele for sure now, can you let your banjo lele settle? Because your hands have these beautiful things called arm lines. Mm -hmm. And you have your pinky arm line that travels all the way up through your scapula mm -hmm. and all the way down the other pinky. And then you have your beautiful thumb lines go through your clavicle sternum and then all the way down to your other thumb. So as you're holding it, your fingers have so much power in this and to determine what's going on in your primary control. Huh. Crazy. Yeah. Because we think of our eyes having so much power, which is true. They have 30% input, but they're also the youngest sense. They're, it's the last sense to develop when we're born. Mm -hmm if we allow for ourselves to notice the weight and you can slowly if you continue to feel the weight bring the banjo lately up to you and almost like you know you have you have three beautiful children right so allow it for it to be just as precious it's almost like you're giving it a hug <laughs> and what's that like because i don't wear a strap when i play I often feel like I have to hold on to it tight on my body so that it doesn't slide away or I've got to keep adjusting to get, you know, to the right feeling. But if I just, if I allow it to rest on me rather than feel like I have to hike it up, if I allow it to rest into my arm lines, it feels much less <laughs> like, a, like a tight bear hug, you know, um, like a nice hug. Yeah, it's like the nice hug right before bedtime. Mm -hmm. As you're kind of allowing yourself to um, be touched by your banjo lily, because that's what's happening. You are touching your banjo lily, but you're also allowing yourself to be touched by your banjo lily. Touch and be touched. Oh, that's a Tommy Thompson thing. And it's beautiful. What I'm gonna have you do is see if you can allow for your pinkies to let go ever so slightly and see what happens from there. Makes my whole hand and arm softer. It's 2%, even less than 2%. And then notice if you can allow for your wrist to let go 2%. And we're gonna go up the arm lines for a little bit. And then you have your elbows. Because once you settle into that hug, elbows release mm -hmm. and I don't like to say shoulders so I'm gonna go straight for the armpits <laughs> allowing for your armpits to settle on top Ooh, that was fun mm. what was that well I feel like letting my hands and then my armpits go makes the the weight of the weight of those things settling makes me feel like my neck is longer and that let me feel like the breath could go all the way through me you talked about a spiral that it i go down and up at the same time that's kind of what it was feeling like i felt like as each one of those things was 
releasing 2%, that was becoming easier to find release in the back of my neck as well. It's indirect, really. Um, and that's most of the Alexander work. We come in with an idea of what we want and we don't go there first. Because the minute mm -hmm. you go to the place where you have like the screaming child, and you pay attention to that versus the children who are actually participating and working with you in this moment. It's you can either listen to that one child or you can allow that child to listen to the others. Mm -hmm. And learn from the others. Because we are what we listen to. We are what we focus on. The majority of the time. That's heavy, Katie, because I know what that's like to be in a class of 20 children and have one who's derailing everything, you know, not only just paying attention to that child, not necessarily settle that child down. It starts to make other kids feel, oh, look what he's doing to get attention. Yeah, I'm going to do that, too. You know, and then it will start to ripple out. But but at times it feels like, ah, that thing is so loud. How how do I not pay attention to that? Right. Is acknowledging the child but not spending as much time right? trying right. to fix the child. When a student walks in and I'm like immediately, all right, let's talk about, let's talk about the back of your neck. <laughs> that's, that's, that then becomes the hardest thing to do. Cause if you start with your focus on that thing, that's the loudest, you know, then all your attention becomes about that thing, you know? So maybe by listening to the uh, the things that are happening around it, that thing can start to become a part of what's happening in the rest of the body. And so I guess if I put that into context about, you know, postural things and singing, my neck's tight because of whatever other multitude of things it's try trying to tell me about what my body is feeling that day. You know what I mean? at that moment and you're just like do i work through this frustration or do i take a moment and you know listen mm -hmm. for a bit so that's kind of what we were doing and, and yes it was exceptionally indirect um but it's kind of answering the same question how do i let go of my neck mm -hmm. without asking that exact question right right i guess you know practicing alexander is as much about practicing consciousness, you know, about what it is that you're doing with your body as it is about, you know, knowing the, the knowing the tools, you know, it's, it's, you can have all the theoretical knowledge you want, but it's, you have to be able to pay attention to it in order to do it. It's, it you know, there are a lot of things that we do subconsciously, unfortunately, and it's just because we're doing so much all the time and, um, you have to build up patterns within your life so you can survive and live on instinct and do stuff and coordinate and blah, 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 blah. Um, but you probably don't think about how you brush your teeth at night. You probably just do it unless there's something that you notice and it's like kind of gross. But like, <laughs> you're not like thinking about the whole process of it because a lot of it is habitual pattern. A lot of it is subconscious. Mm -hmm. But... Even if you went home or if you went tonight and you brushed your teeth and you're like, what am I doing? How is like, what's my arm line? You can play with arm lines with it. Mm -hmm. You can allow the toothbrush to become part of your hand and your hand. maybe you can notice how the texture feels. Maybe you can notice what it smells like, what it looks like, what you look like when you do it and kind of playing with that and noticing the different sensations. And it's just brushing your teeth. But it's such a pattern that it's gonna definitely affect something else that you do. Mm -hmm. Because we could be doing what we're doing with the passing out of the papers. Right. To stay right. over the sink. Right. Or we're trying to get down to the sink. Right. It's all connected. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let you enjoy hugging with your arm lines. Can I try taking off my glasses and oh. seeing if that has an effect? Yeah. Is that okay? That is totally fine. 
You know, what's interesting is that I live my life in glasses. You know, I, I, I actually, I tried to have the, um, LASIK surgery, but my corneas are too thin. So, um, so I, I'm, I'm resigned to wearing glasses and contacts aren't very comfortable, but I do always wear contacts when I perform, right? So people can see my eyes and then I'm not, you know, I look like the character, whatever. Um, so I practice in glasses every day, but then when I go to, you know, audition or step on stage, I don't have glasses on, you know? So I wonder if maybe I should practice without glasses more <laughs> and that maybe might, I don't know, kind of uh, draw some, some union there. And it's just noticing. You don't have to discover anything. You have everything. Mm -hmm. You don't have to look for it. You can discover it, but like, you don't have to like search for it. Right. You can discover them just as well, even if you're looking at a blurry version. <laughs> even if you're looking at a blurry version of Katie on my iPad. Letting my thumb go makes a big difference. Yeah, it's fun. And then what if you let it drop into your hands and into your elbow, even just a little more? 2%. Was my savior not now that behavior's all on Savior fed he well? Satan is always in excess, forty in down where fallen angels dwell. Heed how you deliver sweet things. Obviously, you have a stunning voice, but Thank you. it's just I my favorite part about watching a performer is when they truly enjoy the experience, mm -hmm. and that was exceptionally enjoyable to watch. Kind of just now, I felt like that was one of those moments where, by thinking about my arm lines and thinking about keeping my arm lines, you know, connected and soft, um, I was more focused on that but everything else just kind of was just like yeah you don't have to worry about that anymore you know and then and then suddenly i feel like oh okay well yeah now i can actually enjoy what i'm doing you know versus just do it <laughs> you know? essentially you've got to be versus do and like that's a weird concept unto itself like being with yourself versus trying to be with yourself mm-hmm um, because we are such a um, product oriented culture. Like we look for the results. We look for, you know, the outcome. What about the process? What about taking that moment to really enjoy that versus the outcome? And then you were able to do without trying. Mm -hmm. We're going to Yoda territory here. <laughs> if you're not in the moment of being and you're trying to do you know it, it, we are our product as a, as a as a singer you know and you want to be the execution that they're waiting to hear so that they'll cast you you know and so you think so much about making that execution perfect or like the recording that they're used to listening to or whatever legitimate in their eyes and and in trying to do that i i am not being as much of myself as i can be you know and then that's my frustration as i call my wife and i'm like i know that i can do this i do this all the time why can i not do it in this moment 
you know, and maybe it's not necessarily about the doing and more about the being. I'm glad this resonates with you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. If we had a magical bow, that's not so magical. What would be a word or phrase for today? There is no try. <laughs> uh, I, I actually, to, to come around to that, I, I like that. To focus on being and, and not so much doing. I think that that's a, that's a, that's a place that I need to go to be, to take the next, to take the, my next step as an artist. You know, that's not just about the doing. If, if, I, if I separate myself from that, um, that's no fun. You know, I have to be me every time I sing in order to enjoy it and to resonate with people. Well, thank you so much for Thanks, being Katie. here. Thanks, Katie. This was, was fun. Great. It was so much yeah. fun. For those who aren't familiar, this is a mindfulness technique that incorporates both mind and body and finding the unity, the connection between the two. Um, what it offers is an approach to our daily life, ourselves with more ease. So basically what we're learning here is how to keep it simple. We discuss how habits are built over time subconsciously in the mind and physically in the body. What I offer is the opportunity for us to bring these subconscious thoughts, these um, holdings in our body, tension as some people would call it, and bring them forward so that we have the ability to observe them and explore them and then make conscious choices to see whether or not they serve us anymore. And from there, we're given the choice to either continue on as we are or try something different. Throughout all this, I am basically a reference point or guide providing you with space to make discoveries and have moments of understanding that are meaningful to you. At the end of our time, I ask for what's called the bow, which is basically a word or a phrase about something that stood out for you during our time, something that gives you context for future discoveries. The bow is not really the end, it's kind of the beginning of the learning process because we are introducing an idea, a thought process during our lesson time. And then once you leave the situation, you get to explore, to choose to explore it um, in your everyday life. And that's what's really beautiful and unique about the Alexander work. What I'm hoping that you get out of these times together is that you can start to see changes from person to person and how they take in the information, what their definition of the work is, and maybe coming to a conclusion or a thought process of what you believe the Alexander Technique to be 